Okay, here is the RF unit all ready to go back in with the other chassis components. So, got all my sockets wired in, uh, rebuilt electrolytic, got the pilot light tucked away inside there, popped in a couple tubes, got the caps grid caps uh, hooked in, got the capacitor all hooked in. So here are those uh, three curious things I found. So this whole frame is grounded. It's grounded through these screws. Insulated back here on this rubber mount, but definitely grounded up here, through the shaft, through these bits of springy metal against this brass shaft into here. But in addition, they have capacitor, capacitor, capacitor. And uh, I'm thinking that maybe those were there to uh, filter out any noise in case there's some corrosion in here as these are rotating. And it's not making any good ground contact. I'm not sure. Uh, I got uh, reproduction rubber mounts on the sides. Got the Copper grounding braids soldered on to this side as they were originally. So let's put this in and then uh, see about getting it all wired up. So it drops down like so. Make sure all these wires are tucked out of the way. And then you have to kind of squeeze it in either side where these rubber mounts are. And, uh, and work it back. Outside. Here's the other. Here's that side. There's that side. So there's those bits of rubber down in there. So you push them down and then you shove this whole thing back. And now, the rear piece. Again, reproduction. And it goes in like so. And there's a bit of metal that slides up and down. A hole in it, threaded hole. So we need to get this screw through this into that. A little tricky because you got to push this back and move this up and get the screw in there all kind of simultaneously. Ah, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. And then we take this down, and that's it. Cushioned in here. Alright, so now the fun bit. Make sure all that gets hooked up right. So there's not much clearance here. I guess the way uh, you're supposed to run these wires is between the slots and these side pieces. So for example, like this wire would run through maybe here. So now I need to uh, kind of peer down in there and figure out where those wires go. I mean, I already did figure out where they go, but now that it's <laughs> mounted inside the main chassis, I have to kind of re-identify the wires. Three of them are easy. These three guys, these are the antenna wires. And uh, still looking around for a replacement for the missing antenna plate on the back. Now, let's just stick them out the hole in the back. So, yeah, those three are easy. So, do all the easiest ones first. Uh, another easy one says so one of these is ground, one of them is filament supply. They get wired in down here. Uh, this guy, which got kind of wrapped around the volume control there. This uh, goes to. Power. So 
Well, that's one going right to that cap, so it goes right there to the junction of the 15K and the 13K over on this board down in there. And uh, then we got some other. Uh, to figure out what uh, we got to the primary on the IF, that's an important one. We'll take the signal well, from the antenna, it's down converted into here, and then into that IF, and then we have to hook up the uh, AVC as well. So not too bad, not too bad. Why don't you work on uh, something like this for a while? It actually starts to make sense, believe it or not. Alright, I think I got everything wired up right, so I want to do a power up test. And it occurred to me having these metal tubes up here, in general, I like, but I can't see the filament glow. So, first thing I want to do is pop out the rectifier, put glass tubes in so you can see them glow to make sure the filament wired up right. Guys, out. Mm -hmm. Pop this guy in. Okay. And uh, this tube, the 688, uh, didn't have a shield. This guy did without me having one on there. If I do put the rectifier and try powering up, it may have some oscillations. So, see how that goes. And. Uh, this would normally be mounted to the uh, frame for the dial, uh, but I don't have that installed right now, so I'm just going to clip it to ground. Kill the overhead lights a little. Plug this in. I got the power switch wired in, remember? So we can operate it with an actual switch. Get the junk out of the way. Alright, so it's off. In PR57 on, and now this is going. All right, looks like we got a winner so far. Got the light, and the tubes are lit up. Cool. Now, once again, I've got a wire in the output transformer and a speaker, and then. See if this thing actually works. All right. Well, I guess this is it. I put transformer and speaker hooked up, and I got a voltmeter to monitor B plus as usual. Here's the speaker. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's do it. I'm not sure what band I'm on, but. Uh, See how that goes. Alright, so plus is going up and then we'll go down, either tubes warm up, your home out of the speaker. Let me just say position one is uh, broadcast, so that should be here. And I'm hearing absolutely nothing. No hint of any sound. Oh, wait, no, there is one thing I did not hook up, which is the shadow meter. And without that, we don't get full power going to the other side. There's no power going to the plate, or uh, not the plate, but I think the, I don't know, what they call G3 on that tube, and uh, oh yeah, and the plate on the 6K7, so we got no power going to the plate on the RF tube. Probably not going to hear anything, so let me dig that out and hook it up. Okay, you got the shadow meter hooked up. Just the uh, coil, not the uh, lamp. Deal with that later. So, here we go again. And... Contact.
Now I don't have an antenna hooked up, but I figured uh, even so, I'd pick up some some local strong stations. Well, pretty quickly I found a problem. Uh, I was wondering why I was getting no sound coming through at all, including when I touched the uh, caps on the tubes. And then uh, I started tracing out what's feeding the audio amp. And I realized that pin 3 of the 6Q7 there is not connected to anything anymore. It's up in here. And I recall that I had made a mistake when I was wired when I wired it in uh, on a previous installment. I had it going to this side of this point zero two two microfarad cap, and it should be on this side. And uh, I don't remember <laughs> uh, what exactly happened, but all I can figure is uh, uh, the wire that I was using I didn't think was suitable when I uh, realized I'd made my mistake and I, I pulled it out for some reason and never bothered to replace it. So uh, I think that will make a big difference if we actually feed some audio from the detector into the output amp. So I will dig up a wire and get that connected. Alright, maybe this time we'll hear something. Power on. At least I'm hearing a little something as I'm adjusting the volume. Alright, well I can certainly fire up my RF generator. And, uh... Generate a strong signal. I'll just kind of leave the, uh... And near, uh, just clip it on the insulation of the antenna lead here. And uh, let's see, uh, let's just do like uh, 1.1 megahertz or something like that. Megahertz, 400 hertz AM modulation. And I'll go like uh, amplitude, I'll go like zero. Scope, see if local oscillators are Now, unfortunately, with all these coils in the way, it's basically impossible to get at the bottom of the 6A8. However, I do have an octal tube extender I can use if I need to, but for now, I'm just going to clip the scope to the cap on the 6A8 which uh, isn't quite ideal for detecting the local oscillator, but maybe I can pick up something. So here's what my scope is seeing now. And... Yes, that is varying in frequency. Seems to get a bit cleaner as it goes higher in. About 2 megahertz. So I think, yeah, this is the AM band that I'm on right now. Let's go up to another band. Yes, higher frequency. This local oscillator is running. That's cool. And highest band. Ah, 
This much better looking sine wave at the higher bands too. Curious how the amplitude varies a bit, but that uh, doesn't really make much difference in terms of receiving a signal. Alright, well, I think one thing is pretty obvious that I need to do, which is uh, uh, strip off some insulation and extra feed a signal in. I'm not sure which, um, let's see. I'm not quite sure which of the deal is with the red and the black. I would think the red is signal in and black would be ground maybe, but they also have a separate ground there, so I'm not sure, but I guess I'll try figuring. So when, when they show, all these switch positions they show are with it in the broadcast band. So we got the red going right through here, right through that coil and around. And uh, makes a circuit over to the black, but it's also center tapped and going over to the ground. So it looks like it's a balanced input around the ground. So if you put a dipole between these two, I think. All right, got my RF generator going through a dummy antenna, uh, otherwise known as a capacitor, going to the antenna lead. Still at um, 1.1 megahertz. And uh, well, let's see if we can tune it. Nope. Yep. Can always try using a stronger signal. Something's just not getting through. Well, one test you can do is touch the old uh, caps on the tube. Alright, well that's 6Q7 on the IF, that's getting through. I'm not hearing anything out of this guy though. Which is the uh, first IF. Seems a little odd. And uh, what if I touch... RF tubes, nothing. So I have a little problem in here. Even though I tested this earlier, it might be a problem somewhere. Could be under wire. I right? haven't hooked up. I did test this tube, and it tested all right. But uh, I'm simply uh, swap another one in. That's an easy thing to do. Hmm. Well, still uh, no luck on uh, the broadcast band. So it occurred to me, hey, why don't we try one of the shortwave bands? So it's four megahertz. Let's go to. The intermediate band, which goes from 2.3 to 7.4, so 4 is right in there. Hey! How about that? To the shadow meter, I think, has moved off to the side, too. see it moving. But that's a pretty weak signal. I have the volume up all the way. And I'm feeding in a really strong signal, so uh yeah, wasn't hearing anything when I touched this before.
Uh, well, one thing I can do while I'm hearing the signal is I'm just going to peek these coils by ear again and uh, see if that makes any difference. So I kind of recall when I peeked these coils by ear before, I was able to get the secondary of the first IF and primary, secondary of the, the, secondary of the second IF, but not the primary of the first IF. I think because I was feeding it from a low impedance source. But that is not the case anymore, so that primary might just be horribly out of alignment. So we we'll have to see. I'm really gotta <laughs> make some of these connections more permanent too. Got a lot of alligator clips running around right now. Okay, way off. I gotta drop that signal level down. Toughen myself. Okay. That's way off too. It's good. I want to find something wrong. So the radio's not working all right. I just I started out at minus 10 dB, now I'm down to minus 60, you can barely hear it, so I got a minus 50. So that's a pretty substantial uh, increase in gain there. And yeah, yeah, the second IF is, looks like it's pretty good as it is. I'll go through the full alignment procedure and do it anymore. More properly! Later. Alright, cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, let's get rid of this. Just, uh, I got like a two and a half foot long alligator clip. I'll get it. I'll get another one up to it. So, like maybe a five foot long antenna hooked up to it now. I'll just kind of throw that up. Ooh. See if we can actually pick up anything from the ether. Hmm. No. Well, let's go back to broadcast. Hey. <laughs> Very faint. Kill my scope. But that is something. That's WGN. Which should be booming. It's a pretty strong local station, so that's miserable. Text us to that number, and you know, I just put my finger on the cap of the 6A8. So, uh, it's so much louder when I do that. I'm thinking that something's not right, probably with one of the, ant with the antenna coils, or the alignment's really off. But I didn't really mess with these coils or these trimmers, uh, certainly not uh, on the antenna ones, but the ones furthest back. So, I wouldn't think that they need to be tweaked much. Bounds clear, but southbound 394, jam from Thornton Lance into Glenwood Dyer Road. Lake Shore Drive found heavy from yeah. Salty Field into the north. Some proves it up with my finger on Chicago the uh, cap of the. Uh, oh, that makes sense. That's the RF amp. This radio should have plenty of gain because it's got an RF amp up uh, up front. Yeah, so uh, and they, these are all strong local stations. I'm getting. Yeah, I just disconnected the antenna and it made no difference whatsoever. Uh, it could also be I'm just using the wrong wire, so I'm going to strip all three of these and try each one. That black made no difference. Let's try this guy. 
Nope. Alright, so something's not getting through. I was going to clip my antenna to the uh, grid cap on the RF amp. Progress. Tone switch is working too. It's not too late to make the smart choice. There's still time to apply to Governor State University to take classes in the fall. Don't delay the start of your future any longer. GSU has the most affordable undergraduate tuition rate. where there's a bunch of white kids. You can't rule it out, but man, that, that would be something if Ray Rice joins that team, given all the other moves they've made already this offseason with some questionable guys. Shit on me to do anything on me. Really Could be two reasons. One, uh, because of whatever problem is still on this radio, or um, I know the magnets in these can get weak and they can cause problems. But I know the strong enough signal it moves. I showed that in an earlier segment. I drove it directly from the function generator. I'm just grabbing the end of the antenna now. I guess I make a pretty good antenna weed. <laughs> Alright, let's check those shortwave bands, see if there's anything out there to be heard. In the final bouts on Thursday, Kira Zimmer's Lady Siva produced her first performance in. Oh, 
suck the high shortwave band out. Huh? That just occurred to me, uh, I'm running a 6K7 RF amp, it should have a shield on it without a shield, so uh, let's try putting a different tube in there and see if it makes any difference. Replacing that 6K7 didn't make much difference, so I uh, then took out a meter and checked for continuity and everything seems to be fine. So we've got very low resistance between the red and the black wires. The meter is not too accurate when you get down below 1 ohm, so 0.7 ohms. I, I can't tell if it's a short turn or not, or if it's a dead short, but certainly of continuity. And on the other side, I checked from the cap of the 6K7, which goes through that top switch, and then through the 6 ohm coil, and down through another switch, down to the B6 bus, and over to that resistor, and then B4, which goes off over to the automatic volume control, and that measures about 51K, so we have continuity all the way through there. But this is the best I can get right now, so I have like a dipole antenna going between the red and the black, I've got about five feet of wire on either end. And I have tried tweaking these trimmers. This is the antenna coil. This is um, like bandpass filter, and this is a local oscillator. And it just doesn't make that much difference. If I tighten it down really tight, it gets faint. If I back off, it gets louder. And I can just keep backing off and backing off, and it doesn't get any louder. Very similar thing happens on this trimmer. But some sure isn't right, because let's check this out. If I just bring my hand in closer, especially in like the bandpast area, much louder. So Especially if I actually touch that capacitor. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you walks every morning and I found this you know riverside so, uh, I find try getting a much longer wire and see uh if that helps. Well now I've got about a fifty foot antenna hooked up and it's definitely much better. Not quite as good as sticking my finger on the cap of the six K seven, but much, much, much better. Uh hey you know what I, once again just having a blast. So maybe that's all it was, but I found it a little bit puzzling because my thirty eight ten over here I've got an antenna like three feet long, and I'm pulling in all kinds of stations. And this should have just as good, if not better, performance. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, I can go through again and do the uh, the um, alignment with a better uh, RF generator rather than just using uh, by ear, like listening to a station while doing it. Well, I'll uh, hook up power to the pilot light on the uh, shadow meter and let's see if it's uh, deflecting now. Alright. Shadow meter hooked up. And as the radio warms up, the vein inside there flops over this way, blocking the light. When I tune in the station, it should move back the other way. Mm, not really. I'm going to try touching the cap of the 6K7. Yep, and it's moving.
Troy has been hurt going back on the disabled list today. So, if I can get that game somehow, up, that shadow meter, I think we'll work all right. Alright, so, not fully functional yet, but getting really, really close. I'm hoping it's just a matter of alignment. Uh, so it sure doesn't seem to be as much gain as there should be. So next up, the uh, first thing I'll do is check the voltages on the tubes. The few voltages I've checked so far all seem to be fine, but uh, there's a few more I can check. And um, I'll go through the full alignment procedure. And if it's still not that good, I may just have to pull this out again and double check the connections here. And then there's still always that issue of is this really D4 or D6 and should it should still be connected together as they show on here. 